Preserving or correcting how skin looks in your videos is super important when you're color grading because people notice that skin looks a bit weird very quickly, more so than if they were to notice that the green of a bush is not quite right or the yellow of a path is not quite right. Because we're tuned to see people and faces and skin, it's a lot more obvious when the skin colors or skin tones don't look right. In this video, I'm gonna show you two ways to check and correct your skin tones to get Get them looking in the correct ballpark so people won't think people in your video look like oompa loompas. The first and most basic way of checking your skin tones is to open up the scopes, change to the vector scope scope, click this button to open up the options and make sure you've got show skin tone indicator checked. When I tick that, we get this extra line down here. You can also click this box to pop out the scopes so you've got a bigger version of it. The vector scope shows you where the colors are going in your image. These squares represent red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. And this line is the skin tone line that we just turned on. Click on these three dots in the scope and make sure display qualifier focus is checked and make sure in the viewer that qualifier is turned on. If it's not, click the drop down arrow and click qualifier and this eyedropper turns white. What that lets you do is hover anywhere over the image and you get this big circle in the scope. So if I move this circle over these green or yellow bushes, we can see on the scope, that's where those colors are falling. If I move over this bluish t-shirt, you can see it's pointing a bit more towards blue. And if I move this around on my skin, you can see that this line on the vector scope currently pointing past red and a little bit towards magenta. This is where the skin color or skin tone in this image is currently sitting and it should be pointing more along the skin tone line. So let's go and do a basic correction for this. I'm going to switch over to the HDR palette. I'm gonna to come to the global offset and I'm gonna just start moving this around until we get closer to having the skin on that skin tone line. I'm looking at the scopes and I'm also looking at my monitor. This is what it looked like before and this is what it looks like after. And I could spend a lot more time doing this color correction, but I wanna show you the second method which makes it super easy to check your skin tones. I'm gonna click on this cross to close the scopes and I'll go and reset the HDR changes we just made. You're going to need to open up the effects, open up the nodes and find the DCTL effect and drag that onto the node. Next, click this drop down and choose Mono Balance V 1.1 Demo. The version number might be higher. Now, this tool doesn't come with DaVinci Resolve. You have to go and download it and I'll put a link in the description. You can get the free version, which is what I'm going to show you now and try it out for free. Or if you really like it, then you can go and purchase it. I've got no affiliation with the person that created this. I just think it's a really great tool and I wanted to share it with you. So we'll go and select Mono Balance and we get these options. And you can see we've got weird colors all over my face now. We've got these yellows, these magentas, and tiny bits of green. That's because this checkbox is ticked here, skin tone indicator. What this really amazing tool does is it colors in your colors on your video in your screen, and it really quickly shows you whether or not you're close to that skin tone line or not. We'll just close the nodes to make a bit more space. And if you're wondering what these two black boxes here are for, that's because this is the free version. So that's the limitation with this free version. If you buy the full version, you won't see those black boxes. You'll see the whole image. If you're just working with standard video files from a video camera that was shot in Rec. 709, so nothing log, nothing HDR, nothing like that, just standard picture profile, then you can just add this tool to your timeline. But if you're using log video files or you're working with DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, there's one little extra step you need to take and that's because this tool expects to work with Rec. 709. So what we're going to do, we're going to open up the nodes. I'm just going to reset this node and that's going to remove that tool. In this node tree, I've got this node which has got a CST converting to Rec. 709. So I need to add a node after this and then add the DCTL to that and choose Mono Balance. Now I can come back to the main color grading section of this node tree and start to move around this global adjustment. As I'm moving this around, you can see that the colors on my face are changing. The green parts represent skin that's tending more towards green. The magenta parts represent skin that's tending more towards magenta. And yellow is between those two extremes closer to the skin tone line. You can see in this vector scope down here, things are looking crazy. So you can't actually use the vector scope properly when you have this control 
or this effect enabled. So all we need to do now is we just need to move this global dot around until we make sure that the skin is covered. If it's something like this, you know it's definitely going to be off. Now we can see the whole face is covered by colors. My skin around my nose is usually a bit red. My lips are red. Under my chin is in shadow. That's tending a bit more to green. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up the nodes and we can either click on this node with the effect and turn it off and on, or we can click on this node and use Control D on the keyboard to disable that. If we pop out the vector scope now, you can see that this section of the skin is sitting bang on the skin tone line. This is what it looks like after the color correction, and this is what it looks like before. You can see the face is a lot more magenta, and after color correction, we get this. So when you're color grading, if you have more than just a few clips to color grade, it can start to take a long time. Luckily, there's lots of ways in DaVinci Resolve where we can copy the color grade from one clip to another clip or share color grades across multiple clips. And that's exactly what you'll learn about if you watch this video next. I'm Jason Roberts, this is DaVinci Dojo, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.